On December 6, 2014, the Guyanese head of state announced that Guyanese will be going to the polls almost one year before the constitutionally due date. This move, which will see the general and regional elections date being announced early in 2015, follows the head of state's decision to prorogue the 10th parliament on November 10, 2014. It was to preserve the life of the 10th parliament so as to provide the 10th parliament specifically the political parties therein, another opportunity to address the finality, the many issues that had yet failed to have full parliamentary consideration. You would recall I made mention of the following, anti-money laundering and financing countering of terrorism legislation, the Amila Falls and renewable energy in Guyana, education legislation, telecommunication legislation, financial expenditure of the public funds. The parliamentary opposition reacted disappointedly and sought to discredit my initiative, even to claim it was unconstitutional. I wrote the leader of the opposition. I addressed the nation I hosted meetings with stakeholders. My administration more than justified the resort to prorogation. Additionally, I pointed out the opportunity pror prorogation offered to improve the enfranchisement of Guyanese yet to be registered even after the completion of the sixth round of continuous registration by GCOM. It should be noted that during the period of prorogation, government officials headed by the president met with a wide range of stakeholders. These included members of the diplomatic community, civil society, the private sector, all of whom echoed the call made by the head of state for dialogue. I think what the whole nation would like to see is a response to the reasons that the president has given for proroguing parliament. The reason the President has given for broken Parliament is to facilitate dialogue, to create a framework outside of the parliamentary confrontation that is inevitable. So he's done it. What he's done is perfectly within the constitutional uh, right of, the, of, a, of a President. What we'd like to see, and much of the discussion that took place in there, was how can we facilitate that dialogue. Speaking from the point of view of the private sector and civil society, the Article 13 of our Constitution does provide for civil society to become directly involved in that dialogue. The very nature of politics is confrontational. The very, very nature is partisan. So introduce a bipartisan voice here. And civil society now has a responsibility of its own to, to, to offer its services, to get involved, to be present, and participate in facilitating that dialogue. The president is very optimistic that dialogue will solve and take us out of this situation and uh, we encourage all parties at stake to facilitate such a dialogue. We in the private sector would like to see such a dialogue take place um, but we will hope that it happen as quickly as possible so parliament can resume their functions. The meeting with the president was um, a good initiative. Um, I think it didn't tell us anything um, new other than what has happened in the past um, day and a half. And we are optimistic that, you know, um, our um, politicians will put Guyana first and uh, come up with a uh, solution on the way forward. I think all of us are very concerned and um, we look forward to some sort of resolution. I think the meeting is in fact a good gesture on behalf of the, by the president because he did say that he's going to call for civil society and have them informed 
of the, this, the rationale behind the decision taken. And he has done that. Now the next step is with civil society. We need to get together as civil society and see how best we can talk to the opposition and get the dialogue process commence. The president had used his constitutional right and we hope the whole nation understand how we should resolve this peacefully. As an entrepreneur, we don't want to see anything fail or we don't want to see people in this position of who should rule and who shouldn't rule. You know, we all have equal rights, but they should, like how we had a civil conversation just now, where everyone speaks their mind and they say what they think should happen. It should be held at the at open, maybe the conference hall, I should suggest, or some way that, that, you know, everyone can attend and hear a public debate, rather than both of them in parliament all the time, and are not issues that will not make any sense to them. Both sides think they're right. President has the constitutional authority to prorogue parliament. The spirit and intent, the intent of the Constitution, that clause of the Constitution, is not for what if E and the AFC and the AP and you get problems in Parliament. It is for some things that are more serious than that, right? If they have problems, then they have to go in Parliament and resolve those problems. We have given up some authority from the army. We have given up authority to the parliamentarians and we expect them to go there and work on our behalf and if there are differences then they will work towards resolving those differences at the sideline. I don't know how we got here but uh, I think dialogue is definitely needed at this time and uh, you know, rather than this, say this side is right and that side is wrong I think all the politicians should come to their senses now because there's a period of, of, of goodwill man they could get into the season of Christmas and all this, and I think they, you know this is the time for them to uh, more or less uh, have a discussion and talk. Oh, I think that we have to find a way to try and bring the parties together um, because we need, uh, as a country, we have to find a solution. Um, regardless of how we got to where we are, we need to find a way to get out of where we are, right? And the only way is by dialogue. The period of prorogation was seen as a time for both sides of the National Assembly to take a step back and examine key issues, but all the calls for talks by government were for naught. On December 2nd, 2014, the leader of the opposition responded to my letter of invitation of November 18, 2014, declining attendance at my proposed dialogue. I had to concede that my objectives for prorogation were unlikely to be achieved. The president was left with two options to consider following his decision to prorogue the parliament. One, return to the 10th parliament, or two, general elections. The return to parliament was not an option I exercised on November 10th. My judgment was it meant business as usual, including the debate on the opposition's no confidence motion in my administration. I am of the opinion that since then, very little has changed, and the opposition leader, David Granger's rejection of my invitation to dialogue has cemented my reasoning. Should the parliamentary political parties return to the 10th parliament to business as usual? Where, where there is no productiv productivity, and, uh, and especially during this Christmas season? President Ramotar indicated that since his invitation for dialogue was rejected, consideration of the option has occupied him. I have considered and I have consulted, and this is my resolve. We will go to elections. I have also since written to the international community, alerting them on the possibility of early elections and the desire for them to feel observers, observer missions. However, we will not disrupt and damper the Christmas spirit with the evident purposeless, purposeless parliamentary debates. Early in the new year, I intend to announce further steps towards 
the direction of general and regional elections in Guyana. In the meantime, I will be consulting GCOM on its readiness and Guyanese can get on with the business of having an enjoyable Christmas. As preparations begin for the elections in 2015, the president and government officials have been visiting numerous communities and meeting residents, all in an effort to keep them informed of the latest developments. Very, very well we have been doing. Um, uh, a lot of our party leaders have been out, and all the reports that I have been, I myself have been out, I've been out for a little while, for a few days actually, and um, I can tell you that our response is very, very good. President Ramutar is confident of the PBBC government winning any election and returning to office. I have every confidence that the PPP will win the majority of the next election. And we will not have this situation. This situation has been an impediment to the development of our country. And I think the Guyanese people have seen that. And this election, the PPP is going to take the majority of the next election.